Els dies 25 i 26 de juny, el filòsof australià Peter Singer va visitar Barcelona on va oferir dues conferències al Centre de Cultura Contemporània emmarcades en les jornades dedicades a Josep Egozcue, organitzades per la Fundació Víctor Grífols i Lucas. L'acte va ser conduït per la Catedràtica de Filosofia i Ètica Victòria Camps, presidenta de la Fundació Grífols, i va comptar amb una notable assistència de públic. Després de la ponència, l'autor de Lliberament Animal, llibre de referència pel moviment de drets animals, va atendre diferents preguntes del públic. Peter Singer, que va ser un referent per a molta gent ja fa uns quants anys, en l'any 75, fins als anys 90, s'ha quedat de referent perquè el conjunt del moviment animalista a nivell mundial no ha avançat gaire, dissortadament i ens hem perdut en, diguem, en debats de tipus molt secundaris. Avui el que hem constatat és que des d'un punt de vista teòric el moviment està estancat i ell representa un sector. És veritat que n'hi ha altres persones d'una gran talla intel·lectual que qüestionen els límits de Peter Singer, però també a un nivell d'un debat molt situat a nivell literari, a nivell d'universitat. Però el que hem de ser capaç de veure el conjunt del moviment animalista, que hem de ser capaços entre tots i totes d'anar molt més enllà. Peter Singer a mi em genera una certa ambivalència perquè per una banda efectivament gràcies al seu llibre Liberació Animal que va ser un llibre que va sortir al 75 però que no es va traduir al castellà fins 15 anys més tard doncs molta gent ha començat a pensar en incloure els animals dintre de l'àmbit de l'humoral moltes de les dades que ell dona en el seu llibre han servit perquè la gent tingui consciència. L'argument de hem de respectar els animals perquè tenen capacitat de patir és quelcom insuficient per aconseguir canvis realment radicals perquè gairebé és obvi que els animals pateixen. Hem d'anar més enllà. O sigui, Peter Singer ha donat un cop un impuls molt important per l'animalisme, però encara queda molt camí per recórrer. Molts filòsofs han encara de reflexionar i donar aquells arguments definitius que permetin un canvi radical, on els interessos dels animals tinguin un lloc molt més gran. Espanya és el país de la lluita the most famous Spanish tradition, but also is the most controversial. Uh, a lot of philosophers, celebrities in Spain, say bullfighting is an essential part of our culture. So what do you think about this? Well, I think that all cultures can change and develop, and I think uh, cultures should change and develop. And uh, there are many cultural practices which now we are ashamed of. I mean, every culture, I think, had practices that now it would be ashamed of in terms of you know, racist practices like slavery or practices about the treatment of woman, women. And I don't think anybody would want to defend them in terms of saying, you know, this was part of our culture. I mean, imagine if people in Alabama or Mississippi said that um, racism towards African Americans is part of our culture, people would nobody would accept that for a moment. So if bullfighting is a cruel practice, as I think it clearly is, then uh, if it is a part of Spanish culture, it's a part that Spanish culture would be better off without. Animal rights movement took off in Spain later than other West countries, but now it's getting on and it's getting stronger. Two years ago, after a shocking investigation about four farms in northwest Spain, some animal rights activists were arrested like terrorists after a very big um, security police operation. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this repression to this movement, this movement in Spain? Well, this is obviously an attempt to intimidate a growing movement, to frighten it into not being active. We saw exactly the same thing happen in Austria, where I happen to have just come from. Um, animal rights activists in Austria, who were completely peaceful, non-violent, spent uh, months in prison without even being convicted of anything, just waiting for trial. So um, I think the public needs to be made aware that the government is abusing these uh, criminal processes uh, 
in cases where they are not dealing with criminals at all, they are dealing with legitimate political activity. Um, what do you think about the animal rights movement in Spain, and especially in Catalonia, where we had some important victories as bullfighting abolition, and probably the next one will be the abolition of using animals in circus? Well, I think it's excellent that uh, Catalonia has taken the lead in banning bullfighting within Spain. I think that sets an example not only for the rest of Spain, but for other places where there is still bullfighting taking place. Um, and of course, the uh, getting rid of the use of animals in circuses um, is also an important victory. Um, I think it's really important, though, to carry through with this and also to look particularly at the treatment of animals uh, used for food. and. The movement, therefore, needs to encourage uh, Spanish people to try to reduce their meat eating or to avoid eating animal products altogether. Um, I've noticed walking around Barcelona that it's actually quite hard even to get a vegetarian um, meal in just, you know, ordinary restaurants. They don't seem to have the options on the menu as much as they do in some other European countries. So I hope that uh, activists in Catalonia will also focus on that in trying to make uh, vegetarian or vegan options more widely available for people. Thank you very much. Good. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay.